Welcome to this first edition of Vlogger Dome, the TV show. Cue the intro. Intro? We don't need no stinking intros. Ah, it couldn't hurt. What the hell? Episode 1, featuring Glynos and Too Many Minds 1, and with special guest, Les Unite of the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement. Vehement! Whoa, oh, okay, this episode's subject will be, uh, Vlogger Dome, uh, the TV show. Uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be the subject. So we'll do the how, why, what, where, all that kind of crap. Probably won't bother with the where, not terribly important. And, uh, yeah. And so then I guess there'll just be a list of, um, an explanation of, um, what, uh, will be coming. Coming attractions. Yeah, that'll be it. <laughs> yeah, so the first episode is a coming attractions episode. That doesn't sound too good. But anyway, we'll see how it works out. And, uh, such. Yeah? Mine's Dennis. Oh, come in, man. How was your class, Glynos? Yeah, it was okay, yeah. Just taught present simple for the eight millionth time. <laughs> yeah, that's really annoying, isn't it? Here, one of your students just told me you don't want to have kids. That's right, yeah. Why is that, then? Well, I just think that having kids is kind of risky and selfish. Oh, yeah, Glynos, I used to be like you as well. Really? Yeah, it's it's like you want to be out with the lads. You don't want to be, like, at home with a wife and kids. Uh, no, 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 no. That, that's uh, not it at so all. So you haven't found the right woman yet, then, is it? No, no, no. It's like a, a philosophical position. Does that mean, like, you're worried that it's, like, too expensive and that? No, no. It just means that I think that having kids is wrong. What do you mean it's fucking wrong? Uh, you might be asking yourself the question, what? 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 What is this? Vlogger Dome, the TV show. Yeah. Um, anyway, well, it's a philosophy TV show. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's sort of intended to be a little bit entertaining. Uh, and uh, to make uh, the process of, uh, you know, arguing um, more productive and useful and all of that. And uh, so it's basically just a rip-off of the Thunderdome idea from movie fame. And, uh, yeah, the idea is, look, two ideas enter, one idea leaves. That's the idea. And through, you know, media, <laughs> you know, and entertainment and segments and pieces of this kind of crap, uh, I mean, stuff, um, uh, yeah, the job will get done. Uh, the truth will win and uh, the world will be a better place. Yeah, that's for a different segment. All right, the how question. Ooh, how? <laughs> yeah, how's this gonna work? Um, well, it's gonna have lots of stuff to it. You know, there's gonna be live debate. Um, you know, then there's gonna be, uh, you know, little bits and skits and things that illustrate points. There's gonna be words, words. <laughs> yeah, there, I'll do that words, put words over here maybe, um, your know, words are going to be the important thing, emphasized, and logic, uh, and the fact that there is a, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a truth out here, and it's uh, accessible, and uh, it can be proven um, with argument and evidence, and uh, that will be the intent, is to let the truth uh, have its day. That's sort of the, provide the fair fight. That all, that's all the truth needs, is a fair fight. And it'll win the day, and uh, it will be the possession of the future. To put it more eloquently and such. So, 
On to the why, I think. Yeah, why is a good question. All right, the why question. Well, the easiest answer is compromise. Compromise is the enemy here in doing any kind of uh, thinking about reality and answers and solutions to problems and all that kind of stuff. Compromise with wrong answers is doom. Uh, to take the truth and dilute it with something, anything, is to ruin it, to break it, to make it of no value. And it's, uh, the world needs, <laughs> you know, frankly, um, better answers. And uh, it's not going to get them if it keeps taking every solution and compromising it with lies and cheats and thieves and steals and connivory and nonsense. Nonsense is a key one. Lots of nonsense that needs to be um, uh, master blastered out of uh, social policy uh, and social perception. Perception first, I would imagine. That's a bill. Cute and such. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, the, the why is is because uh, there needs to be um, some decisiveness and uh, certainty and precision uh, in how the human race functions. And that can't happen in an atmosphere where uh, too many men have too many sticky and conniving fingers <laughs> uh, on the agenda buttons. Yeah. There's got to be some sort of uh, consensus around um, reality and such. Yeah, this cat agrees. 99 cats out of 100 agree. <laughs> yeah. Which isn't saying much because cats are a little bit stupid. But anyway. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. All right, a couple of minutes on the subject of doom and uh, the alternatives. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, you are doomed. That's just a fact. Uh, the human race will be turned into, you know, photons eventually. It'll all be annihilated by the universe. It'll consume the Earth and everything that we are in terms of our complexity. It's all going to go away someday through some natural process, uh, maybe sooner than later, who knows when, but there's lots of inevitable, probabilistic uh, termination events that are sitting out there, just probabilistically waiting for its turn, <laughs> and that's just the way it is. Till then, we can say, okay, we're going to survive the future, um, we're violence and technology it probably isn't going to let that happen, our civilization will be doomed much sooner than our physical bodies probably because we have no capacity to learn from history and learn that we are basically uh, animals and uh, we must be properly caged and there's so many people that think we should be free to do whatever the hell we want well then we're gonna want to kill each other <laughs> and so you're gonna you're gonna die then uh, so invest in that idea of freedom and you're going to die well, your prodigy is going to die at any rate. You're sentencing your kids to death, just like you've sentenced them to perpetual debt. Because, you know, the human race doesn't make any sense. Uh, but anyway, there's things like virtual reality and transhumanism and technical solutions, but they're really not solutions. They're just entertainment devices. They're just ways to make us less capable of causing harm. <laughs> you know, but... Uh, you might be able to extend our uh, survivability uh, a little longer through some of these mechanisms. But the basic animal is just an animal. It just needs a TV to watch. And uh, it's all rather dismal and horrid. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait till I do an hour of that. That ought to finish you off. So anyway, until next time. Such. Cause, effect, let's agree, it is a cause and effect universe, it is determinism, the matter and the energy are functioning within very closed restraints, no magic involved here, for substance to exist, it has to exist in a configuration, for this complexity to fall out of it, 
to precipitate, to condensate out of it. Okay, on the subject of democracy. Yeah, that's right, it's a system. Um, what, all, what we all want out of our democracy is pretty much just a fair fight. It's like a trial or some other system of uh, deciding a truth or deciding a fate. And you just want a fair argument, you want a fair fight. And uh, our democracy doesn't provide that because it just gives us these two bad choices and we get to say which one's worse than the other one and we get stuck with it. And uh, often the lesser of the two evils calls himself your representative. Uh, I've never had a congressman um, that I voted for, ever. <laughs> so that can hardly be called democracy when I've never had a representative that's representing me that I actually voted for. So, where's my representation? Ah, it obviously doesn't exist. So yeah, fixing the democracy is fairly easy. Um, you can't do much about the winner-take-all nature of presidential elections, but certainly legislative bodies, yeah, you can fix that. Uh, it doesn't have to be winner-take-all. It can be only affirmative votes get you in. So everybody wins. Everybody gets a representative. And you can do that just by making adjustments to this whole geographic democracy that we have where we vote based on our geography rather than based on our ideology uh, and uh, yeah we can fix this really simple really easy and uh, create real representation have a real fair fight and uh, yeah have like some kind of civilization yeah would that be nice so anyway in an hour I should be able to make this understood but <sighs> there's something to chew on <laughs> think about it uh, anyway, until the future and such. The Chopin Hour Show. In this episode, Shopey becomes an antinatalist children's entertainer. Mr. Clown, can I have a balloon animal? A balloon animal? Alright, you want a fucking balloon animal, huh? Alright, I gotta sing you a little song on top of it, kid, okay? Alright, your father should have put this on his dick. Your father should have put this on his dick. Your father should have put this on his dick, cause then I wouldn't have to fucking deal with you. Your father should have put this on his dick. Is that enough of a fucking balloon animal for you? Yeah. God, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll deal with the God subject, uh, the fable that doesn't die, um, you know, the first bad science that's never been erased from the book, uh, you know, it was a good guess by people who had no clue what was going on on planet Earth, you know, we arrived here as dumb animals, we evolved here on Earth, and we had to acquire knowledge of the Earth. And uh, so as soon as we could add 2 plus 2, uh, we started asking more complex questions. And uh, we didn't have any good answers. What's thunder? Why is it raining? Why is this? Why? What is the disease? We didn't have answers. So our answers is, somebody must not like me. Uh, yeah, so we just invented cartoon characters in the sky that are, you know, manipulating us like puppets for their entertainment, but they're just inventions. It's absolute and complete fantasy. Uh, has nothing to do with anything real that ever happened. Uh, there was no rising of the dead. And <laughs> there was no people living in fishes and arcs with all the animals and all that crap. It's just that crap. And people need to grow up and uh, deal with reality. This is kind of serious business. You know, it really is. You know, the welfare of billions upon billions of sentient beings is dependent on how we uh, react to this reality. And if you're reacting to ghosts and fables and boogeymen and spirits and mumbo jumbo, then you're not going to be doing it right and uh, there's going to be a lot of wasted harm produced by your uh, inaccurate understanding 
Um, God's a lie. A silly, old, archaic, stupid <laughs> loser of a story. Let it go, people. Let it go. No, till next time. Till then. Such. Anti natalism. It's pro creative. Agenda is an engine created by feelings, and feelings are the value engine of reality. It's a motivational engine. This engine of feelings creates value. This engine of a sensate being creating this dependency of wanting, motivating, needing, hunger, addiction, hope, desire, agenda, through intelligence, we can recognize that the agenda engine does not just exist in you alone, it exists in all of the feeling things. All of them are qualitatively experiencing it. All of them are creating value. And the fundamental value of their welfare is comparable to your own. These mortal clothes upon which we wear in memory and dream, all the laps and spaces countlessly counting up and down and eye and ear in every direction, no longer concerned with the real face of this thing, this supreme being we will each inevitably be. It is either this or grays and green echoes and empty stairs across endless cult and civilization, bountifully blooming pride full of under-realization, born into perfection of which all will concede. The only true win is failure to breathe. Failure to select the best of these parts. Failure to toss out the weak and the weary. Failure to eat the less of these lines. For there are always only ever two, the meek and the mighty. Do as thou will and eat every day. Do as thou can and luck pays thy way. While we each fill in the gaps of time space around this entrance to Eden, drafting and dodging the next beast coalescing now, ushering in a new harvesting season, commencing the final assembly, the will and the way, the impulse and intention, inertia swallowing itself, leaving no footsteps for the serpents to follow in. These legless line crashers and plain game dodgers, always contaminating these appetites with efficiency and withdrawal, stripping into utter obscenity and smile, knowing full well it'll never be worthwhile. Regardless of the strict prerequisites posted at every single entrance and exit, everyone still comes back in, so completely unprepared to adequately attend this glorious and oh-so-honorable fleshing and fire trial. Bodies shaped and molded so inconsistently, minds much too pliable and mutilated beyond any real cognition. None of this was ever so unnecessary as the moment of our first admission. Yes, this is and was the only sin we ever committed, given in grace by the divine filth of these celestial servants of inescapable ignorance, the starry-eyed mothers chasing veins of crystal, nectar, and ambrosia across endless direction and proportion, mangling minds into an elaborate contortion, the tale of twin snakes coated in limericks and lures, washed of the blood, high definition, and so technologically superior. All right, a couple minutes on the most important subjects, anti-natalism, or ethelism, or the pragmatic acceptance of the simple logic 
first do no harm <laughs> you know clean up the messes that already exist don't make more uh, you know don't play with fire uh, don't don't <laughs> don't uh, get a job above your skill level um, you know don't play Frankenstein without a medical degree uh, yeah just don't the easiest thing you can do to clean up a mess is not make it it's that simple don't have kids you're not prepared you don't have insurance you can't clean up the mess if you make one uh, it's just a bad idea you have no right and certainly in terms of a you don't have a qualifications <laughs> to be uh, telling others what they should think about existence you don't have a right to impose that understanding on them your optimism your your uh, life lovingness certainly isn't something you should be allowed to project into somebody else's uh, put on their doorstep so to speak uh, you should mind your own business live your own life at minimum, do what you can to clean up the bad that's here and uh, quit pretending you're qualified to uh, make stuff, create stuff. Yeah, you're not. Uh, yeah, goes a little deeper than that. But, you know, that'll be the anticipation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to wait for it whole hour of it. So, till then. Don't have kids! For our first episode, Vloggerdome proudly welcomes Mr. Les Knight of the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement, also known as Vehement. The Voluntary Human Extinction Movement, Vehement, is an environmental movement that calls for all people to abstain from reproduction to cause the gradual voluntary extinction of humankind. Vehement supports human extinction primarily because, in the group's view, it would prevent environmental degradation. The group states that a decrease in the human population would prevent a significant amount of man-made human suffering. The extinctions of non-human species and the scarcity of resources required by humans are frequently cited by the group as evidence of the harm caused by human overpopulation. Vehement was founded in 1991 by Les Hugh Knight, an American activist who became involved in the environmental movement in the 1970s and thereafter concluded that human extinction was the best solution to the problems facing the Earth's biosphere and humanity. Knight publishes the group's newsletter and serves as its spokesman. The Voluntary Human Extinction Movement is a type of antinatalism. Another type of antinatalism, called Ephilism, was created by Vloggerdome's very own in Mendham. What are the differences between Vehement and Ephilism? Let's find out! Round 1! So, we are beginning. Um, so, this is Les. And so, you want to tell us a little bit about your purpose and function, Les? Yeah, I'm one of the volunteers for the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement. There's millions of them. I may manage the uh, website and uh, also uh, host information booths and uh, that sort of thing. And this this is an example of uh, what I do as a volunteer. Yeah, I guess all conversation is a good idea. I'm, I'm um, like-minded in the sense that I don't have much regard for human beings, um, but I have even less regard for nature itself. Um, uh -huh. So, um, you know, there's more targets on my list of let's um, insult a lot of things that need insulting in terms of their uh, poor performance over time, let's say. And uh, so we might agree that human beings have made a mess of having intelligence. Maybe we'd agree because they're basically a selfish monkey and they really just can't get past their own selfishness. They, they can't do the big idea thing. They can't do the vision thing. They can't do for the future thing, obviously. I mean, they have their own children in debt. You know, I mean, that appears to be the problem. Uh, yeah. that, a lack of empathy causes all of that. You know, we've got the potential, we're just not. It's not happening. 
this is a technical um, feature. Now I hear the word empathy just because I always have to have these conversations with people about the value of suffering and the value of pain and all this kind of stuff. When mm -hmm. I, I always think when I say hear the word empathy, I always want to change it to a lack of understanding. Okay. Because empathy is made of understanding first. You have to understand a situation before you can have empathy. And the only reason why animals don't have empathy is because they don't understand. Right. If, a, if a lion could understand that it's causing pain to somebody else's children, it might say, well, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, okay, I'll eat oatmeal. I will. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Might I don't know. I, well, I might well, make I, a rational I, decision. To, well, you know, there's plenty of antelope out there. What's one fewer? Well, well, we know the average human might draw that conclusion, but I'm just saying the the function of intelligence, no matter right. what organism it would be in, we would expect it to have the same effect. So I would I could argue that if Tyrannosaurus got intelligent first, they would be in much distress about their physical formation, and they would say, "Look at us, we're horrible, we're disgusting," and they'd feel terrible that. What do you mean? We, we torture things by function? I mean, this is idiotic. We have to change this. I mean, let's do the pinky drinking tea thing and eating biscuits, and let's not do this horrible torture thing. So I just think, I, I think to presume intelligence wouldn't be able to realize, you know, its own form sucks or is lousy or is inefficient. Right. I think that's the very function of intelligence would be to inform you that your function is insufficient to the purpose. But then our intelligence could also rationalize it so we don't have to worry about it anymore. We go into denial and go, well, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I guess my argument would be is that's not intelligence then. That's um, scheming or that's lying or rationalizing. rationalizing. I mean, r rationalizing, I guess, wouldn't be, in my opinion, a form of intelligence. That would be kind of a form of anti-intelligence. Okay. A form of ignorance, let's say. Uh -huh. Right. A yeah. willful Ignorance. Yeah, it's a wrong it's a wrong answer and it's a wrong answer for a selfish purpose. Right. So I guess I would say I can't put that in the category of an intelligent thought, that would be in the category of some other kind of thought. It seems like our intelligence is what's gotten us in all this, into all this trouble. Well, just the fact that we've used it, like you said, if we applied intelligence mm -hmm. okay, uh, fairly, um, dis right. with discipline, okay, carefully fail-safe kind of ways, um, always looking to the long-term impact, um, you know, doing the basic procedures that you would say, this is what you do to have a good performing nuclear plant or something, versus, right. you know, Homer Simpson. So, uh -huh. yes, Homer Simpson with the intelligence bomb is dangerous, okay, but let's say Carl Sagan with it might not be so bad. Right. But the end result, we still have that nuclear power plant, so... Well, 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 I'm just saying that theoretically, I guess you could argue yeah. that you could come up with a system that could be fail-safe in the sense that you could make a statistical calculation and say, yes, we have eliminated, we have backed up and redundantized everything so many times that the likelihood of failure is one in one zillion hours or something. Right. So it's just that it'd be very expensive, and we don't want to spend the money. Would we decide not to uh, continue creating more of us if we were that using our intelligence? Well, I think we already are, right? I mean, the smartest people on Earth are having fewer and fewer children, and the dumber are having more and more children, right? So, I mean, the only people who are sustaining human existence, technically. I mean, technically, you've already won the argument, okay? <laughs> because most people have less than 2.3 children, right? So, 80% of women have less than 2.3. So, it's only that 20% that are creating the whole population bomb. It's only the, 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 the lesser, the, the, there's one group of people that have a lot of kids, and the majority of women have very few, one or two. But even that, the uh, momentum of uh, population growth is so great that even having one is, is too many. The intentional creation of one more of us by anyone anywhere can't be justified today. We'll return to this conversation at another point in the show. Ah, yes, it's true, I'm a Martian. And yes, it's true, I don't exist. Never felt no pain or no pleasure. And this fact seems to piss off natalists. 
Never been exploited or had candy. Never lost and never even loved. Never known a state of deprivation. There are no tears on Mars and so we've won. So never mourn my lack of useless pleasure. Celebrate my amazing escape from harm. Remember that each child is a Martian until you force the unborn into harm. <laughs> Ah, animal rights and vegetarianism. Yeah, that's going to be a good subject. Uh, it's really not animal rights, I suppose. It's just respect, sentient respect. Respecting sentient creatures and uh, not being grotesque and taking, you know, exploiting. It's just disgusting. Uh, clearly, we, our descendants were not meat eaters. It was only the introduction of fire that enabled human beings to start cooking carcasses and eating them. Uh, this is not something we need to do, it's something people choose to do through acquisition of bad habits, and they certainly can choose different habits. Uh, certainly for the future, they could choose better habits. Uh, billions of people get along just fine without eating meat, uh, and we don't need to uh, torture and torment animals. Uh, for our gratification or gain uh, beyond what is absolutely necessary, right? Wouldn't that be a nice standard? If you were going to be ta tortured, wouldn't you, wouldn't you like the standard to be it's absolutely necessary? I think so. So, uh, yeah, this is it's one of those really simple subjects in the sense that there's no, there's no, nothing but rationalizations nothing but desperate rationalizations on the opposing side. There's really no reason or excuse beyond bigotry to minimize the uh, meaning of an animal's suffering. Uh, it's just convenient, and that's why people do it. It's convenient to their selfishness, period. So, <laughs> yeah, I expect some name calling in that video. I mean, you know, names like bigot, that's really all it is about, is bigotry. So, enough said. Until uh, then. Don't have kids! I was trying to think how high my sacrifice would have to be in terms of the goodies, the sunsets, the looking over the Grand Canyon moments. Which ones of those, how many of those would I sacrifice to uh, prevent one child from having cancer? Just one, okay, named Bonnie. Let's say seven years old, and uh, I can prevent cancer from manifesting in her body. Yeah, go ahead, take the Grand Canyon, take the Tetons, take Yellowstone National Park. Just start stripping, you know, go right down the list. All the things I've seen that have been at all inspiring. Take them, take them. Yes, take all the desserts I've ever had and give me the bread. Give me the nothing, the mundane, the, the benign, uh, uninspiring and take all that inspires me. Take everything, every, Glimmer, every, every wink at beauty. You may have it. I will lose it remorsefully, but I will sacrifice it gleefully to prevent that suffering. So yes, obviously I would, my life has very little value, you know, because I can't even 
I can't calculate the best and best of it. I certainly would sacrifice to prevent somebody else from having to endure the worst of it. It's just that simple. I can't, I can't say it to you any more honestly than that. That's honestly what I think of the value reality. Uh, and this isn't even a kid that's my own. This isn't my own sister or my mother or my father. This isn't somebody I even care about personally beyond the fact that it has a nice name. You know, and I've made it cute. But beyond that, there's nothing. So what? What if I made it just a, a wolf in a trap? It's in a trap for two days. The leg's gone numb. It's now going to gnaw it off and then go through the pain and suffering as the feeling comes back and bleed to death and die. I can prevent it. What do I give up for that? Take it all. Take it all. <laughs> yes, you, you may have it all. Eradicate it all from experiential reality. Every beautiful moment I've experienced. Because it means nothing balanced against the ugly. It's just more powerful. The bad apples are more poisonous than the good apples are pure. It's just a sad, tragic truth. Yes, you can believe differently, but you have to make an argument to me somehow. Say these words to me. Tell me that you've had some joy so precious that you would hold on to it even if you could spare somebody four years of chemotherapy. And I'll understand who you are. I won't understand you in a good way, but I'll understand. But don't tell me I'm wrong to think that it would be worth sacrificing all the Greek gaudy beauty moments to prevent those Poeskian horrors from being experienced. Ah, a couple minutes on the right to die. Ooh, depressing. Uh, yeah, but quite obviously a, a sensible, civilized right. Uh, you know, the only the only way you could contrive an opposition is through some sort of notion of a god or some judgmental force that would find objection to you, you know, insulting creation, you know, by saying, oh, I don't want to eat every bit of it. It's like insulting a meal. And, uh, you know, if you believe God is the chef, you don't think anybody's allowed to say, no, nah, I think God can't cook. <laughs> I think God's a lousy cook. So that's pretty much all the risk that the subject really is about, is the oppressive, religious, crazy people uh, with their fables and their fairy tales trying to tell other people how to live. And it's just obnoxious and grotesque that ignorant people would tell enlightened people uh, what they are or are not going to be allowed to do with their own existence. I mean, it's hilarious when you think about it. Uh, and the fact that Many intelligent people just benignly say, well, I'll never really need the right, so I'll just let it slide. And I'll let the silly religious people insult my intelligence <laughs> by denying me a right to uh, get out when I feel like it. And uh, so it gets, nothing gets fixed. But certainly there's plenty of mechanisms you create uh, to ensure that only people who are absolutely uh, certain and absolutely of sound judgment at every stage in their life when they make this. You can spread the decision out over a number of years, so to speak, and be assured that this decision is always consistent and the per this perspective is always consistent and prevent anybody from making rash or decisions they wouldn't make in their right mind. There are ways to protect against that. So it should get done. It's way past due. It's, you know, it's just one of the grandest imbecilities of our civilization, quote unquote, that it can't provide this minor courtesy uh, to the suffering. Uh, yeah. There, I resisted the temptation to be really hostile. <laughs> yeah. All right, anyway. See you then. Such.
It just means that I think that having kids is wrong. What do you mean it's fucking wrong? <sighs> well, I don't want to go through the whole argument now, but I just think that if you put your ego to one side and look at it rationally, there's no real need for continuing this whole life cycle thing. And by having children, you're kind of subjecting somebody to potentially bad things. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I do, Glynos. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's like you feel like you're not emotionally and spiritually mature enough right now. No, no, it's not like that at all. No, 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 it is, right, right, because I, I used to be like that. I used to be just like you, Glynos. Just like me, just like me, really. But well, why don't you tell me, Dennis, what the fuck do I believe and why? Uh, uh, you think it's, like, wrong to have kids and that? And why? Because, like, you want to spend more time out on the piss with the lads and that. Yes, again, <laughs> fucker! Because you don't find love. Last chance, fucker. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, I oh, know. It's about selfishness, Glynos. Ah, oh, finally, finally understand something. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's because you're too selfish and you want to go out on the piss with the lads and that. Value, the most precious thing in the entire material universe, is the capacity for a consciousness to generate a sensation of horror and unpleasantness. That is where all value comes from. Not just some value, but all value is generated in the consciousness of sensitive sentient creatures. Alright, on the education system. Yeah, education is really easy to fix. All these things are so easy to fix. Uh, it's just startling. Uh, the current system, we're paying performance artists to redundantly do exactly the same thing over and over and over again in all these different institutions all across the world. Uh, just senseless. <laughs> you know, just do it once, do it very well, record it. Uh, we have the technology, play it for everybody, uh, give them free access to it all, and pay them to learn it. So instead of paying teachers, instead of paying an industrial complex, Pay the students and pay them well, and you'll get results. You know, take half the budget of what's spent on education now and uh, provide it as a reward for passing a GED. And uh, I can promise you, <laughs> with all assurances of my logical mind, that uh, you will be amazed at the results. As you'll have high school graduates at 12 years old. Uh, you'll have people hungry for knowledge. You'll have more engineers than you know what to do with. You'll have more scientists than you know what to do with. You'll have kids that won't be obsessed with sports and glamour and style and nonsense because they've, they've gotten hungry for knowledge. They've gotten a feel for it and they're going to like it. Uh, it's just the truth. They're going to be hungry for more. Uh, and so... Uh, you can just radically change the nature of the human animal by rewarding it for doing things that make sense, not things that don't make any sense at all, like swimming around in circles in a swimming pool or some other nonsense. Uh, so anyway, just a really easy fix. Uh, pay the students. They're doing the work. They're, they deserve the money. Uh, you know, really isn't complicated. You want to get all those poor kids off the basketball courts? You want to get them off the streets and the drugs? Yeah, pay them real money. And they'll show up at the library. They'll show up and read the book because they're going to want the money. They're going to want to pass the test and get the money. It really is that simple. Yes, yes, you're going to have lots of tutoring and this and that. There's lots of uh, intricacies that can be added, but uh, no point in going into that in this introduction video. So, see you then, and such. Being able to model a reality is an element of our strategy engine. Our senses give us the qualitative feeling, and then we have our intelligence, our memory, capable of calculating, and doing logic, and creating a map and model of reality that enables us to find the strategy.
It is part of our scheming brain. Through modeling, we can create a plan that works in obtaining our own gratification, but it also gives us the ability to see agenda outside of ourselves, in other feeling creatures. Agenda that's broader than our own gratification and satisfaction, um, to have that now become our agenda. Ha <laughs> a couple minutes on the subject of economics. Yeah, well, the current system is probably crashing <laughs> by the time you're saying this. So, what's the point? Ah, uh, but anyway, yeah, we could have a fair system, a rational system, you know, an earned system, you know, where people earn what they get, and uh, they're incentivized to do the right thing, and uh, not steal and cheat and lie, and all that kind of stuff. We could have something called fair economics instead of, you know, whatever, inheritance, <laughs> nepotism, uh, cronyism, uh, yeah, all the, the negatives that exist in our system, uh, it's about who you know, not what you know, all that kind of stuff, we don't have to have any of that, uh, we've chosen to have that, because no one will clean the mess up, no one wants to pretend we don't need to have a lottery system, you know, that we don't need to be insanely incentivized to do the right thing. You know, that we can behave, <laughs> you know, in some sort of efficient manner. Even like a fungus, yeah. Funguses are probably smarter than humans in, uh, in the sense that they don't, you know, give it to nobody. <laughs> they don't give it to the undeserving. Anyway, they're forced to earn it. Put it that way. Um, yeah, that's enough. It gets kind of co complex, it, any, any idea would, um, but it's not socialism, it's just this idea that you, you don't need billionaires. They're not efficient, they don't really produce anything. They squander your money on insane investments, on small print lawyers, manipulations, deceptions. Uh, you don't need any of that. Uh, we really don't. Uh, we can have a lot more not-for-profit businesses that can serve most of our needs without any need to pay interest and indebtedness to people who want a paycheck for doing no work. Uh, we don't have to invest in those people. So anyway, yeah, so see you there and such. Sorry. Now back to our conversation between Inmendum and Less Unite. Round two. The intentional creation of one more of us by anyone anywhere can't be justified today. <laughs> well, well, uh, yeah, I would certainly agree with you that we don't have time for doing it slowly. But I'm just saying what? that technically we're already on a path yes. if we just stopped the 20%. So I'm just yes. saying the majority of people are already acting as if they understand. We know they don't understand. They're not doing it on purpose. But I'm right. just saying they're already acting as if they understand we're at peak population. Uh-huh. Well, way past peak. Sure, yeah. Way into overshoot. So if we, if we uh, can uh, um, provide reproductive freedom for everyone on the planet, it would go a long way. Is that other 20% that you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't even want to be freedom. I think we should extort them. I think we should bribe them out of their fertility. You know, so I, I would, I would be more aggressive in realizing that they are, they have a, their stupidity is rather profound, and you're probably going to have to spend some money to get them to do the right thing. You know, uh -huh. You're going to have to bribe them out of it. Possibly so, but when we uh, start making economic incentives, we uh, target a. A demographic that's uh, the poorest people, and uh, in America especially, that gets into ethnic uh, 
the difference our um, institutionalized racism has caused uh, a larger number of uh, ethnic minorities to be in that demographic. So yeah, it might be a good idea to pay people to uh, say get a vasectomy, but uh, the rich people won't be motivated by uh, by that. Well, like I say, they've already we've already won the argument with them. They're already not reproducing it. And maintain population rates, so they've mm-hmm. they're already out of the game anyway. They've taken themselves out of the the population game. So in a sense, like I said, if you just fix the twenty percent over a thousand year period, you would decline in population to nothing if everything stayed the same in terms of the demographics of understanding. So if people remained the same, if they had the same understanding of what they want out of their life, which maybe isn't for kids. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you would end up with no population after a thousand years, but obviously we don't have a thousand years to play right. around. Yeah. And each new person is going to have a life that includes a lot of suffering. So it's kind of the antinatalist idea, isn't it? That, uh, we shouldn't create another one just to suffer. Yeah. Well, that's the, our focus. Like I say, I was trying to figure out exactly, you know, we end up with a similar conclusion. We get there yes. through different reasons, right? So it's like, yes. you can be a vegetarian because you think it's healthy for you. Sure. Right, so there's some vegetarians who are health nuts, and then there's vegetarians like me who are suffering nuts. So right. I, I would be in the suffering category, and everything for me is just a suffering equation. So I can't make a distinction between a suffering human and a suffering primate right. or a suffering wildebeest. So for uh-huh. me, the problem is nature itself. I mean, if you know, I, I was reading in, in your, your paper, it said, it said natural perfection. Okay, that's a quote from your, your writing. And I, I was just a little, I, I'm just saying that's probably a good subject because yeah, I can't find any of that natural perfection. I mean, you know, I don't ten. Using that term. <laughs> huh? I don't remember using that term. That sounds kind of. Oh, well. I'll, you, I'll go with that. <laughs> well, well, I'm just saying that it's, it's, you, there, there's a general tendency in, in the theme that is nature's better than stupid humans. Yes. Right. And so from my perspective, though, would be that's why I, I, I actually turn the word life backwards and, and call myself an ethelist now, because I'm not just antinatalist. Right. I'm just not against humans procreating. I'm against all life procreating. It's just a bad news. It doesn't go anywhere good ever. So our, uh, even though our re- end result is the goal is the same, uh, eliminating humans, or you're saying eliminate all life, but, uh, you know, we're one species out of the entire biosphere. So the reason I wouldn't go that far is to say that uh, one species out of tens of millions doesn't really have a place to decide for the rest of them. We can decide philosophically, but to actually do it would be going too far. Well, let's uh, maybe use the analogy. Let's say you're on a bus. Who do you want driving the bus? Mm-hmm. Okay, the imbecile or the guy who actually has worked on buses for 50 years and knows everything about buses? Well, yeah. I mean, we're the smart guys, right? If we leave nature to the dumb animals and dumb oh, forces, I, I mean, aren't we just advocating all responsibility? We're saying uh-huh. take the dumbest guy and put him in the seat. Or don't put anybody in the seat. Just say right. let no. the bus crash, Okay. And you're saying that's a responsible duty of a human? No, I'm saying humans have a responsibility to clean this mess up. That's all the time we have for this conversation for this episode. But if you'd like to see the rest of Inmendum's conversation with Les Hugh Knight, please visit us at the Vloggerdome YouTube channel. There you can see the full interview as well as tons of extras, other arguments, and lots of other stuff too. If anyone out there watching would like to make a counter-argument of any kind, please feel free to make a response video on YouTube, leave a comment, send us a message. You can also contact us on Facebook and Twitter. We'll be adding other social media networks as well soon. If we like what you have to say, your contribution could end up on the show. Hope to be hearing from you. All right, my assignment is a couple of minutes on the subject of free will. This idea of anti-determinism or anti-you-are-just-a-programmed thing. So, yes, we will prove uh, in a coming episode that, uh, yeah, there is no such thing as a free. That's... (laughs) <laughs> that's going to be the easy part. It's like, all I have to do is say, show me a free, because there isn't any such thing. Um, yeah, it's sure, just a byproduct. You, brain, it's just a byproduct of circumstances. You're just a reflexive organism. Things happen to you. They build character in you. They 
dent you, they change you, they scar you, they make you what you are, and they create the process that is your end result, passion or desire or will. Uh, you know, and you either understand it's important not to be a jerk or you don't understand it. I always talk about cats being stupid and he's lying in crud. Now he's got crud attached to him. But anyway, he is awful cute. That makes a big difference. Uh, so anyway, just like the cat has cat programming that makes it do cat-like things, which is jump in front of your feet and try to trip you and make you fall down and such. And I do this thing in the wind. <laughs> yeah, because what, I'm stupid? Uh, apparently, okay, I have a couple of defects, flaws. Um, limitations, lacks, absences. But yes, that's all what we are. We're just a big bucket full of uh, you either have it or you don't have it in terms of your understanding, uh, your sensibilities. Uh, you're either sensitive or insensitive because of how you acquired your running instructions. You know, what buttons have been pressed on you in your experience here on Earth, um, combined with your native genetic construction. Uh, men behave a little differently than women, generally speaking, because they start off with a different physical construction. Um, but still, it's the variability is going to be based on um, what happens to you. <laughs> you know, whether you get hit by a car or you don't get hit by a car, that kind of thing. And that's all there is. We're just reflexes. We're just byproducts. There is no product. There's just us reacting to the world based on what springs have been compressed inside of us. Yeah, and we'll prove it. We will. I mean, to do an hour on that subject, we'll prove I mean, it's impossible not to prove it. <laughs> impossible. So we'll be done with this idiotic notion of freedom. Uh, but of course, we're not saying people aren't still jerks, and we're not saying you still can't call them jerks. Um, they're certainly still responsible for their actions, so that's just a silly idea to say they're not. Uh, you can still hold them responsible. Um, there's still some purpose in that, uh, at least for the purpose of deterrence. For the purpose of deterrence. You know, future. Future is the only thing that matters. That's one of the things we'll also prove some... We'll probably prove that in like five or six of the different video shows. And, uh, you know, because that's... You know, that's an easy one, too. Anyway, the future's everything. Pretty much. It's that way. Anyway, this is probably too much. More than enough. No. So in conclusion, we are doomed. Try not to fuck anyone else over as much as possible. Try not to impose as much as possible. Just being alive makes you a taker. Your every happiness is paid for with another sentient creature's suffering. You are an asshole. Try not to be as much of an asshole as possible. It's extremely important for all of us to understand the myriad ways we can, in fact, be extremely dangerous in this world, and to try not to impose as much of that dangerousness on the rest of the world as possible. No matter how small you may be, you will, in fact, have an impact. Use what power you have to minimize the suffering. Please?